I am not my name. Funnily enough, I'm certainly not my name. Uh, I, I'm sure most people here realise that I'm transsexual uh, and that I wasn't actually born and named Veronica when I was born by my parents. I was actually given a boy's name and I grew up with a boy's name. And it wasn't really until I left uh, my family that I had at the time and went off on my own that I you know, came out as the transsexual I always was, I was born a transsexual. And I decided to take a name that was most or more appropriate to the way I am, or what I am. And I went into a solicitor and I did a thing called a deed poll, which meant that I signed a piece of paper in my original name and then I signed another, that same piece of paper underneath as Veronica. Now, this human being went into the solicitor's office. This human being, this flesh and blood, came out. So the name, my original name, had been detached and my new name attached by the depot. So that proves that I am not the name. Everything that's written to you is written to your name. It's not to your flesh and blood. It can, actually can't be to your flesh and blood. It's to your name. And all actually you have to do is to say, I'm not that name, fundamentally. None of them believe you. I mean, the, the police don't believe you, the courts don't believe you, and so on, of course. Actually, there are some police, funnily enough, in recent weeks, who started to realise that maybe that's the truth. That people are not their names. I'll hopefully come on to a lot of that. That's the, like the latest stuff, uh, which I hope to talk about. Um, but uh, that's if there's time. Okay. Um, think about an identity parade. Think about an identity parade. Do they stand there with their name, holding up the name? Or do they just stand there as the, the witness walks by looking at each individual in the lineup? That's the one they might go. Not by the name, because they're not holding a name. They do it by observation of the flesh and blood, because that's a common law situation. Common law is all about human beings. It's not about names and paperwork. Fundamentally, what happens in the common law, we look at a situation, we use our common sense, and we go, oh, it makes sense to uh, make sure that Justice is never delayed, all right? Oh, so that was written down in the Magna Carta. Uh, it makes sense that people who administer the law should know the law and abide by it, mind, be minded to observe it well. So that's written down as Article 45. Common sense stuff. Legal, which comes out of Parliament, so in other words, sorry, so, so with common law, what we do is we see, what, see reality, the reality of a situation, and we write down a common sense situation that fits the reality. Parliament, they write the, the statute, right? And then they say, ah, that creates reality. Whatever the statute says is now reality. No, Reality doesn't work that way. Reality is reality. You can observe it and write it down. You can't just write a statute and that makes it real. It's the opposite way around. The deception is to make you believe that you are your name when you're not. Your name is nothing more than a fiction <coughs> for the convenience of legal to operate on you without your consent. Also, sorry, for the convenience of your parents and your friends to call you. Which is why I am Veronica of the Chapman family if you go back to uh, my first screen or if you look at the cover of my book. I'm Veronica of the Chapman family as commonly called. So when people go, Veronica, I go, oh, that's me. But that's all it is to get my attention to get your name. 
the convenience of your parents and friends to get your attention, but it's no more than that. No more than that. And they certainly don't have the right to use that to do you for council tax, income tax, road tax, insurance, TV licence, you name it. Parking fees, parking fines, you name it. Don't have the right. Rough justice. I've already sort of alluded to this. Can you be jailed? Yes. Can your DNA be taken? Yes. Can your local council or the Crown Prosecution Service or a utility company be jailed? No. Not the company. And that's basically what would be, uh, would be the court case would be against you. You know, Herefordshire Council versus whatever. Uh, can, it, can, can the local council, Crown, Crown Prosecution Service or utility company have its DNA taken? No. How can any honourable adjudication take place between these two parties? You, the human being, have just about everything to lose and they've got virtually nothing to lose. A playing field is stacked vertically against you. They are there, you are there. There is no point in even trying to discuss it with them or argue with them, but I'll come on to what you can do. Interesting, the last one. One of the things that the police love to do, or do these days, is to take your DNA. How dare they? Ah, but the very fact that you've got DNA and they can take it proves you are not a legal fiction. It proves you're not your name. It proves you're a, a flesh and blood. So when you get the summons to your name, Mr. or Miss or Mrs. da -de da you can write back and say, but I'm not that name and the fact that my DNA was taken is forensic evidence that I'm flesh and blood and not that name. That name is just marks on a piece of paper, a sound in the air when it's spoken or pixels on a computer screen. It's not me, I'm flesh and blood. I have a soul, I have limbs, I have a brain, I have spirit. I can kick a football. OK, what is the common law then? <laughs> it fundamentally breaks down into four aspects. I've said it's the way to live in peace and it's the common sense way to live in peace. But analysing it a little bit further than that, each of these is no deliberate and to prevent accidental as far as you can. I'll take the first one, no deliberate harm to anyone else and as much precaution as is reasonable to prevent accidental harm from your actions. Don't leave things where people can fall over them. Okay? You could harm them. Be aware where you leave something. But, in all of these cases, there is a point where it becomes unreasonable. The example I was given when I learned to drive buses, right? Well, I, I actually was tested to do an emergency stop in a bus. Now, you are taught as a bus driver that you must not, you know, do emergency stops normally. You're taught to drive without the need to, to stop sharp. Now, I know a lot of bus drivers stop sharp, but that's, they're, they're, they're not working according to the way they were taught. For an hour and a half in their lives, they did drive properly, otherwise they wouldn't have a licence to do it. Trouble is, they get the, the licence and then get back in the bus and drive it like you would drive a car. Problem with buses is can't, you can't drive it like a car because there may be people hanging, elderly people hanging on the rails for dear life, or someone even standing up there with a baby in their arms. So you're supposed to drive a bus with anticipation of what's likely to happen and take, slow down accordingly so that you know, you just slow down nicely. But you, do, you are tested on an emergency stop because there are circumstances where you may have to do an emergency stop, very rarely. And the example they give is you're driving down the road in service at 29 miles an hour, one mile an hour under the speed limit, so you're absolutely perfectly making progress, okay? 
line of parked cars, as you drive down the road, out from between the cars, runs a child in front of you chasing a ball. Bang, you kill the child. Okay? Or, but because of, you see it happen and you jam the brakes on. And in actual fact, not quite a child, but a, a car came out of a side turning on Christmas Eve 1999 right in front of me and crossed the road right in front of me. I was on the main road, it came out the side road. And I hit it. I didn't stand a chance. That, so that actually, some, a similar situation did actually happen to me. <laughs>